If any part of your workflow requires taking notes on PDFs, I'm really hoping that this video will become an aha sort of moment for you where you can save a lot of time and just minimize the changing and interplay of all your different services. It's important to not be a victim of shiny new tool syndrome where you're just going from one thing to the next and the next, like pick one thing and stick with it. But if you're trying to find that one thing to pick and stick with, then I can highly recommend LogSeek. One of the things that's super important to me is just to have everything in one place mostly one place. LogSeq really does offer an all-in-one solution that will allow you to really speed up the processing of your PDFs. A few weeks ago, I had a working session with my friend Lee, who is using PDFs in his workflow, and it wasn't something I'd actually considered before, but recently I've had to download a few PDFs and take notes of them, and I have realized that this has sort of been a missing part of my, my toolkit. A quick breakdown of the video today, I'm just gonna go into a little bit more about why another tool, just do a simple workflow, then I'm going to give an overview of the features. And for those of you who have been around for a while and are subscribers, a little bit of chit chat on the channel and what might be happening next. I'm going to be changing over to a very cool theme called the Discord-like dark theme, I think it is, just so that we can have some contrast between the left and the right side of the page and hopefully improve the viewing experience. There's a little bit of a quirk with this theme in that it's a little bit wider than the traditional theme, but I've really started to like using this because it has some cool properties, which I will show you just now. Getting a little bit more into detail about why another tool, as I said, getting everything into one place for me is just super important. It minimizes the sort of cognitive burden of where that I store this. And I've started to use LogSeq as my long-term memory, even from a file storage capacity. So if I'm going onto the internet and downloading a PDF, typically that lives in my downloads folder. And then months later, when I'm clearing everything out, I can find things that I downloaded and never looked at and I'm like, oh dear, where should I file this? Now, those things are gonna go into LogSeq. The cool thing about this is that when I upload files to LogSeq, and I'll show you how that, that works just now, it stores those files in my asset folder of my LogSeq storage. So let's get into an example and I'll show you exactly what is happening. If you're new to LogSeq, I've got two videos, which is how to get started on LogSeq as a beginner. I'm going to be publishing a series very soon, which is a lot more in details about the exact steps, but have a look at those two for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open the, a new page on the right sidebar, which is an example PDF. So control K example PDF. And if I shift click that, oopsie, shift click that open on the right side. And then we go back to my other page and now to upload an asset is very, very simple. I just push the forward slash key and I can scroll down here to upload an asset or I can just type upload and then it filters it to those two options. I can say upload an asset. And this is the Agile C-Suite, which is an example of the PDF that I'm wanting to use in LogSeq or to, to show you this, this functionality. So I now have that PDF in my LogSeq database and I can open it just by clicking on it. So it's open that file in the left. But what has happened to this PDF? You know, where is it stored now? If I go into the folder that my LogSeq database is referencing, it's on my Google Drive, this notes folder here. And if I go to assets, you can see here somewhere, hmm. There we go. This PDF at the bottom there is the one that I've just uploaded. So all the assets that I upload are now stored here. They're not in any structure at all, but if I want to find them, it's very easy because I am able to add metadata on my LogSeq page to enable me to find them. So now getting back into LogSeq, this page here is where I've stored the, where I've attached the file. So now I can add metadata to enable me to easily find that by a number of different ways. So I use a workflow which uses text expanders, but you can upload a template and then um, with the same forward slash there, choose your template, but I'm not gonna do that. I just use a new template that I've created, which is pulled in from my text expander. And if I say TXCF, it uploads that there, cool. So now I've got metadata that I can add there. So the producer here is HBR. The link to the article, I'm not gonna go find it now. 
some of the tags that I'm going to use here are um, agile. Um, I know this article talks a lot about chaos or chaos management. Chaos and status. I'm using status a little bit more now to indicate articles that I still haven't processed or haven't worked through. So let me just say there, I'm currently synthesizing it. Doing slash synthesizing. So now what I've got here is a bunch of metadata that will enable me to find it very quickly. So I don't have to remember where I stored the article. I can be like, there was an article by HBR. So I can click there, let me just do on the left, and I can see there, there are three linked references to HBR. Okay, let me just collapse that or collapse this one here. And you can see there, these are my three articles. So the first one, Beyond the Halacracy Hype. This one, Reengineering Work, is created as another PDF. And this is my example PDF, the one that I'm using. Or if I'm just thinking, I'm, I'm sure I uploaded this as a PDF, I can go to PDF and do a similar thing and then I can filter by what it is tagged as. So these are all the different things that I could filter it as. Hopefully even showing you that powerful metadata searching approach shows you the benefits of having everything in this like flat structure with good metadata that allows you to find your information very, very easily. Jumping into what the PDF editor allows you to do or how it allows you to take notes let's bring up this page now and i'm going to actually open that as our main page and close this okay so this is an article on the agile c-suite i'm not going to go too much into what agile is and what it does but very interesting article specifically if you're working for a company that's trying to incorporate agile but is just a little bit chaotic so let me go and find a piece now that i can highlight i had a quick scroll down here and in a large firm it's not easy to maintain balance a business operating system is made up of many components bah, 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 bah. and if i highlight that now i can copy the text and paste it into this page and you can see here it's just got that thing with the pdf where it's not recognizing the line breaks so well but that's fine but the cool thing that I can do as well is I can highlight that and then push the highlight button or choose a color and then paste this as a block reference so that when I hypothetically close this page and want to revisit it, I can click on there and it opens it up and takes me to that highlight. So super powerful functionality. And I can then write some observations on here. Now, there's a number of ways of doing this. Um, you can group all your highlights under a heading of highlights. So let me do this where I go highlights, or I could say annotations. And if I indent that, that means that it now inherits that tag or that, that um, page link of highlights. This is Another cool feature of this particular theme is that it shows you your lines of inheritance. So if I now click here on this highlight, I can see that this block will inherit all of these tags, HBR, Agile, Chaos, Highlights. So now if I want to go and find Agile and I want to go and find something which I was like, hmm, have I had any highlights on Agile? I can then go there and say, ha, I have had some highlights on Agile and it takes me there to that page. So I, I know I'm jumping around a little bit, I'm just hoping that this shows a little bit of that, again, that power of being able to find things very, very quickly through appropriate tagging and filtering. And then I could write some observations on this. Let me go back to this page, example PDF, and I can write here some observations. And this is my workflow, I typically write observations. And then I can say, one thing I've learned is that finding the right balance points is very difficult. Okay, let me just delete this here. Let me carry on and find another example here. 
So I've just scrolled down and found this little piece here, which is also super interesting. I would typically read it in a lot more detail, but if I copy that and I go underneath my highlights again, so I don't want to have it as a child block over there. So if I just shift tab out, I can paste that there. And here I've said, rather than predict the un unpredictable, agile leaders build rapid feedback loops. Now this reminds me of an observation where this is similar to OKRs. Well, actually lots of systems have rapid feedback loops. Scrum, OKR, they all have rapid feedback loops. Scroll down there so that my head is on the way. And I can say, creating page links now, OKRs and Scrum both inculcate these rapid feedback loops into their modus operandi. There we go. I finally managed to spell that right. So what I'm doing here is taking notes and building observation notes on what I'm reading in the same place. So it'll be up to you to determine how you want to take these observation notes and synthesize them in another place, or if you just want to search and then be able to write it, but you could actually move these blocks and reference these blocks in the ways that LogSeq allows you to do very, very easily. I'm not gonna go into details about block references and linking right now, but hopefully this has shown just the power that is available to you if you're doing everything in the same place. I can also go up here to this um, annotations page and you can see it's got a separate page of all the different annotations where it is taking what I've highlighted and this is where the block reference is linking to. So if I open block references, I can see there it's linked into this example PDF. Okay, so going back to my, my video outline, the search functionality is the one thing that is not quite there yet. It is currently in the pipeline, so it should soon be available on LogSeq, but that's really the only thing that I can see that's missing for this. And the ability to have this rich buildup of links and references is pretty cool. I'm gonna to go to an example of something which I've already done. So as I've mentioned in other places, I really like using Airtable, and Airtable recently published this distributed team blueprint, and it was in the PDF format, so I thought, it's the perfect example to like really go in detail and do all this linking. But you can see here, I've put everything under highlights and I don't even have to use that same breakdown. It really is, you know, something which you can decide how to do. What you can see here is that all the highlights I've indented underneath the highlights page name so that I can link them separately. And then I've just got observations that are not linked to highlights coming below that. So here's some thinking that I've been doing on, you know, getting a team hub. And what I've done here is written out a whole bunch of things that I can then go back to when I'm reviewing my different observations and I can create that into some sort of output, be it an email for the team being like, this is what we should do, or some sort of knowledge piece, which I publish or something like that. So if I go into these actual highlights, you can see here that I've, I've started to link it to different concepts. So uh, for, for me, I said, this block here or this reference here says creating a successful distributed team is the art of balancing a mix of employee level working arrangements on your team and i said something something the goal is to keep your reports productive and engaged that starts with getting every report on the same level of connection collabor collaboration and visibility and i had the observation the key here for me is visibility in particular the lower level employees need clarity and i wrote that is connected to getting things done and then I linked that to a block from the getting things done summary that I've been building. And similarly, I have got something here around um, the OKRs. One of the things that OKRs do is they try and, and, and push stretch goals. And I was like, mm, I don't, I'm not sure if I agree with this so much. I like the Derek Sivers approach of enough and having enough. And I've linked that to the blocks from Derek Sivers. Now, my workflow for how I'm managing these observations and turning them into thought pieces, etc., is not quite like super sophisticated yet, but 
what I'll do every now and again is I'll revisit this and I'll turn this into zettles that I will then link to different pieces. And you can see I've already got this sort of interplay of ideas building and building upon one another. So it's not a mature system for me yet. I'm hoping that this sparks a few ideas, particularly if you're in academia or if you're students who's you know having to um, write pieces that you might have PDF inputs. And this will just help you stimulate those ideas and aggregate everything in one place and rediscover it using linking and a good system of tags and metadata. So you would have seen on the video outline that the last two items are channel chit chat and resources and those are actually both linked to the same thing. It's me thinking about the channel and the future of the channel and just giving a little bit of an update about some things that are changing. One of the metrics that I really struggled with on YouTube is click-through rate. And that means that of the people who are seeing the thumbnails, a very small percentage of people are clicking on those thumbnails. I've already begun experimenting with a couple of different design changes to see if I can improve that. And, and I've done a little bit more research on this because I really want to maintain an authentic approach and not have clickbaity titles and like, you know, clickbaity thumbnails as well. So it's been this interesting juxtaposition. This is sort of me bearing my heart to you. And some of you may have noticed that the video thumbnails have changed. So this is why I'm trying to be a little bit better at playing the game. Otherwise the channel just won't grow. So I'm going to try and find this balance between, you know, captivating titles and thumbnails, which I had thought initially were ridiculous, but apparently are quite important in the YouTubers arsenal. Another thing which has changed is that I'm also now an affiliate of Shortform, which is a very cool book summary app. And I'm, I'm very excited about that. Shortform approached me and I had a look at their services and really is, it's been quite impressive. And yeah, if you use my link, you get a 20% discount off an annual membership. And the really cool thing is that I can now have PDF summaries of books and I uploaded that onto LogSeek as part of my workflow and it really works for me. Maybe it can work for you. Thanks so much again for your support and hopefully see you around here for more videos.